What up, what up? Welcome back to my channel. Okay, so before I get started, I want to introduce my roommate's dog, Myla. So today's video is going to be about being a bisexual man and also being Nigerian. So I am Nigerian American. I was born in Queens. I was born in Jamaica, Queens. And I was there until I was like six years old and then we moved to Far Rockaway, which is another part of Queens. My parents are from Ondo State in Nigeria. Before I really get into the video, I just want to stress how much this is not supposed to be representative of all Nigerians or all Nigerian bisexual people or LGBT people. You know, Nigeria is an enormous country. There are over 170 million people that live in Nigeria alone. And that's not even counting people of Nigerian like descent or diaspora all over the world. So my point is that my story is my story. And though there may be similarities to other people's story, it's not supposed to represent the entirety of all Nigerians or all Africans experience because Africa is an enormous continent. Nigeria is extremely ethnically diverse in terms of experience and in terms of wealth, in terms of what you believe. This is my story. I'm not supposed to be speaking for anybody else. So yeah, growing up in America, being the child of Nigerian immigrants was very, very rough and I'm very glad that I made it through, to be honest. I just didn't fit in. I grew up around a lot of black people and black Americans specifically. And me and my siblings, we just didn't fit in. We were really, really poor and our parents were immigrants and so they brought a lot of their, you know, traditions and stuff over with them and we were just their kids, just not knowing that this was necessarily like a good or bad thing. So yeah, growing up it was really hard navigating the two worlds of like at home, it's like with my parents, it's like little Nigeria, but when we go outside of that home, it's we're in America <laughs> and when we go to school, all of our friends, all of them are American. So um, that was really challenging and then also being in Nigerian spaces, we didn't fit in there quite either because we didn't speak the language and we were very Americanized, you know? It was really challenging for me specifically because I am bisexual and growing up I was very feminine and so I didn't fit in in Nigerian spaces because I wasn't Nigerian enough and also because I was feminine and so from a very early age people was like, oh yeah, you have a gay son and this is not good, <laughs> you know? When I think back to being in Nigerian spaces, I do not really have a lot of fond memories. I have a couple, maybe because there were some, some nice aunties here and there, but generally speaking, it's not really like a great place for me to go because Nigerian spaces tend to be very, very traditional. And when I say traditional, I mean traditional gender roles, traditional ideas around family and what a woman should, should do what a man should do, what a woman should be like, what a man should be like. And these are, you know, very colonial ideas about gender and also sexuality, which I'm about to get to. And growing up when I was in Nigerian spaces, they tended to be very, very Christian. And when it comes to that, like there's not this separation of identity and religion as there is sort of in America, generally speaking, depending on what part of America you're in. <laughs> it was like if I was going to learn what it meant to be a Nigerian growing up as a boy, it meant I was also going to be Christian and I was also going to follow these very, very narrow ideas and definitions of what gender is, of what performing maleness was and being queer, being feminine, definitely did not fit into any of that. So I faced a lot of rejection in Nigerian spaces and in American spaces too. But yeah, this video is about Nigerianness. Um, so <laughs> because I faced so much rejection in Nigerian spaces and the world at large, I started to internalize that shame and started to think that there was something inherently wrong with me. So it's one thing for the world to tell you, oh, you know, you suck, we're gonna oppress you, F you, whatever, right? And it's a whole other thing when you start to internalize that and you start to deeply believe on a really deep level like, oh, like there's something wrong with me. And that took a really long time for me to shake and break through years of therapy. And then even after I was done with therapy, really like going above and beyond and doing more work to heal myself and trying a variety of practices besides just therapy. And that really, really sucks when you feel like there's something wrong with you. And it sucks when you're in environments that support that and they're like, yeah, there is something wrong with you. And a lot of what I've been talking about so far has been like, oh, well, when I was a kid, that's how it was in, 
in Nigerian spaces. But even now, like, I don't really like going to Nigerian events. I don't like going into a lot of Nigerian spaces. And the reason is because, you know, it's still very much this like traditional mindset and it sucks. I don't feel like my best self. I don't feel like I can be my expressive, silly, goofy self, really. And I don't always feel like, oh, this is gonna be safe for me, you know? It's 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 so complicated. It's so complicated because growing up, I also was told by my parents and by other older Nigerians that being LGBT was an American concept, was a Western concept. And in Nigeria, there weren't any LGBT people. And so, that really reinforced this idea like, oh, that there is something wrong with me. Like, because if LGBT people don't even exist in Nigeria and I'm the child of Nigerians, like I must have done something. I must, something must have went wrong with me. And I believe that lie for so many years. And it's wild because even now when I meet other Nigerians who are LGBT, who are visible, there's still that moment of like, oh wow, I'm not the only one. Huh, yeah, this makes that makes sense. But <laughs> for so long, I thought that I was the only one, and I was told I am the only one. So that that is like wild because being a lesbian, being gay, being bisexual, being trans, being queer—that's just a part of the human experience, and it's like really, really common. Even though the numbers might not say that, it's really common. And this idea that in order to be authentically Nigerian, that means you can't be anything besides cisgender and heterosexual, is a really, really dangerous mindset. And it's really, really colonial, you know, with Christianity and Islam that were enforced upon Nigerians. You know, a lot of those ideas were reinforced and also established into law. Prior to that, there were some anti-LGBT sentiments and things like that, but there were also some positive representations of LGBT figures in religions, traditional religions, and in lore and all of that stuff. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of point out that the real demonization and by law and stuff like that didn't happen until these imports of religion and these imports of laws were enforced upon Nigerians. And so because I was so heavily rejected and stigmatized in Nigerian communities, I eventually rejected Nigerianness and I associated it with being, you know, backward or close minded or completely ridiculous or this thing that I didn't want to be a part of. And, you know, that's a very human response you, when you're being rejected by something over and over and over again. It's a very human thing to like have a wall go up and be like, you know, well, I, well, I'm not a part of this anyway. Like I'm American, aren't I? That's what I've been saying every time I come into Nigerian spaces. And reconciling my Nigerianness with my bisexuality was something that took a really long time. And it didn't really happen until I would say in my mid twenties, really, where I really felt comfortable being like, you know what, I'm Nigerian, American. I'm bisexual and those are just like facts it's something that nobody can take away from me as a kid so many times it was like no you're not american you're nigerian you're not nigerian you're american but it's a fact like i'm born here <laughs> i schooled here my parents are nigerian those are facts you know and Taking the things that I do like and leaving behind the things that I don't like has really been a saving grace for me. So taking the things from Nigerian culture that make me feel whole and happy and joyous and leaving the things that make me feel small and insignificant and dirty has really been something that has really helped me reconcile those two identities that I occupy. And so like nowadays, like I kind of mentioned before, I kind of do still shy away from um, Nigerian spaces. Or if I know I'm going to go into one, I kind of like prepare myself mentally like, okay, you know what it's going to be like, you know what the personalities are going to be like. <laughs> Brace yourself, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I don't know, like one way that I have like a real sort of like connection to my Nigerianness is by 
learning more traditional dishes that I can cook and stuff like that, which has been an increasing challenge because as you all know, I am plant-based. I have been for the last five years. So even though I'm getting better as a cook, like a lot of those traditional Nigerian dishes are meat-based. So I have to learn like the vegan alternatives and stuff. But that is one way I have to sort of like connect with my culture and like the music. I'm so glad that, you know, Afro beats, Afro pop, Afro swing, a lot of the sounds from West Africa, Makosa, all of that stuff is like prominent in American culture or like globally now which is really really great and beautiful so I connect by listening to the music cooking the food and then also by reading authors who are from Nigeria so I've talked about a lot about Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie on this channel and yeah she's really helped me a lot with reconciling my Nigerian identity and then I've also been reading this other author his name is Nana Ikpo, and so I'm finishing up his book right now. I'm actually going to do a review of it on this channel. But yeah, reading has also been another way to help me sort of reconcile my identities and just know like, you know, I am worthy. I exist, which means people like me exist. For a couple of years, I really had to take a step away from my family and from Nigerian culture and people and really heal, heal myself and find pride and confidence in my bisexual identity so that I could be around them and I could stand on my own and be confident and not feel shame about who I am you know I think about Nigeria all the time because the laws are really really horrible when it comes to LGBT life and rights it is really really bad there was an anti same-sex marriage law passed in 2013 by good luck jonathan the president at the time it went into law officially in 2014 and essentially it not only you know bans same-sex marriage which was never even legal anyway but it just makes the lives of LGBT people in Nigeria that much harder. It solidifies the discontent and the disgust people have with LGBT Nigerians and actually encourages people to violate them, to not hire them, to bribe them, to beat them, to kill them. And so I think about that a lot and I don't really know exactly what it's going to take, but I know that a lot of LGBT Nigerians are doing what they can are working with global human rights organizations are speaking up i know that with more and more voices things like this hopefully the perception can change so that laws can change yeah and i want to imagine a different day for nigerians and for lgbt nigerians specifically when i think about all of this i just think about my immense privilege having been born here even though this country is terrible but in certain ways i just am automatically privileged in many many ways just by being a u.s citizen i want to just like send so much love to all of the lgbt nigerians out there who live in nigeria and also the ones of the diaspora like me who live in different countries different places i want to send you so much love and just tell you that you're worthy of respect and love and care and dignity and i want things to change and i hope things change very soon Thank you so much for watching my video. I will see you here next time. Later.